All right, so we got Steve over here from Rockwell Collins. Good to meet you, Steve. Morning. Um, thanks for coming out. We appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying San Diego. The weather's beautiful. It is. So tell us what we have here. Well, this is the MySat X. It is a, uh, a satellite communications terminal. It was derived for a joint special operations requirement. Okay. They wanted a unit that would fit in the overhead compartment of an aircraft that was WGSX certified. And so kind of explain what that is in layman's terms. Uh, WGSX is a joint consortium of satellite uh, networks from uh, various departments of defense worldwide. Right, and, and so, so that's the kind of the network. Correct. And that's where they communicate through yes. with this. And so the bandwidth on those satellites is free. Okay. And that, that's always good to most customers. It free is, is always good. better. It's only free to the military. Correct. All right, yeah, I had to ask that question <laughs> earlier. So. So uh, they, they wanted this uh, terminal to fit in the overhead compartment of an aircraft, and it needed to require no tools for operation. It, very, fairly lightweight. It is. Um, it weighs 40, 40. It's less than 43 pounds in the, in the transport configuration, fully assembled. If you put in the BA-2590s, that adds the weight of the batteries. Okay, and so those are the batteries, the BA-2590s are the yes. batteries. Okay. So, so kind of show us what, how this works. So um, you know, the, the case to contact is less than five minutes. You, uh, if you were in the field, you would go ahead and open the case, open it up, and note that all these pouches, all your parts are inside. It only requires about eight parts to make it go. If you're gonna run on batteries, you don't have to put a power cable on. You would take a GPS. Up. Yep, that is the feed that you, uh, you go ahead and pull out. There's a GPS puck in here that you, uh, you have to have the unit located. And of course, it's at the bottom of the bag. That's all right. But you know, there's the GPS puck, standard Garmin. It's not a an expensive part. And so these fit in. And then the you have uh, you have six pedals. Actually, that's one of the males. We have three right. females and uh, three males. Okay. And so we always put the uh, the females in first, and that way the males will rest in these little notches on I the female it. pedals. And you can actually operate it in this configuration, but it is not ideal. So once you have the yeah, unit powered up, the time it takes you to assemble these pedals, again with no tools. So once you get it set up, take about five minutes and you're ready to roll. You're ready to roll. You uh, you basically, you know, and this, even though it's not ideal, I mean right now it's it's just a little uh, edgy, but you could actually operate it. Uh, you get an LCD window that will say, hey, you're pointing at. 127. The coordinates. In order to point at the satellite, you need to be at 135. And you just turn this until the numbers match. Okay. And once you get those numbers matched, you, you would do the same thing in elevation. You're at 28 degrees, you need to be at 37. This is an LCD screen so you can see it at, at night. Exactly. And so so you, you brought up an important point. You said, you know, there are competitors out there, but this is the only kind of standalone system where you don't have to, you said, this one you carry in a handle, the other one comes in a rucksack. Right, you could actually buy one of the competitor uh, systems and then their assembly, you know, I just showed you these six parts, the unit and the GPS cable. Right. Um, you know, they are going to be assembling boxes with numerous connectors and numerous cables, all of which are potential points of failure. There's a lot of, of moving parts. Right, and if you want to take it apart, put it together, take it apart, put it together. Because this is only for going to the zone, setting up really quick, transmitting feed, and then boxing up, taking off. That's ideally how it could be suited. However, you could run it 24-7. We've had, uh, anecdotally, we know of a 75th Ranger unit that used it for six months in the desert. They stuck a sandbag in this little well here and it wouldn't blow away. And right. they just left it out there and they ran it 24-7 for six months. Now the energy sources for this. All right, you can use external power, you can use vehicle power, or you can use external batteries hooked to a dongle, which is also included in uh, this pouch, okay, and or you can use the BA-2590s internal to the system. It'll operate continuously for or up to two hours with the BA-2590s. Wow. Um, if you limit the transmission and you're just sitting there waiting to receive something, you could probably go four to six hours on okay. those two batteries. And then uh, what type of data feed can it transfer? You, uh, we, we guarantee one megabit per second up. Okay. Um, you can probably get three or four megabits per second down. So, so that's images, text, voice. voice over IP, telephone, you know, whatever you really want to do. Most people typically hook up a couple of computers and then, you know, they, they have a zipper box, a KG250 between them and the unit. Okay. And then they can class, you know, they can transmit classified or they can surf the web and, you know, find out what's going on in the world. They can do status updates. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, so. we appreciate you coming out and talking with us. Sure. Thank Thanks, you. Steve. Take care.